Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online BGC 17 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Like I mentioned, I am finishing up my time with my US Internationals team. I do want to switch to some new stuff pretty soon because it is a brand new battle spot season and we're still pretty low on the ladder, so might as well try some cooler stuff while I can. And I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, you know, you've been using similar stuff, and I know this team literally was one of my older teams just with one Pokemon difference, so I definitely hear you guys. Uh, so if you have any recommendations for teams, Pokemon strategies that you would like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'm hoping to get a the new team by, like, Sunday, and then I can just spend Sunday recording uh, episodes for now. Next week, been really, really swamped for the last couple of uh, weekends and we uh, days or so. But uh, like I mentioned, I really just want to get back to you guys with content on a little bit more consistent of a basis. But as always, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have been following the multi battle league at all, that Baz Anderson and I are in, we're actually taking on Team Dream Ball, which is Marcus Statra and Wolfie Glick. You know, two of the most recognizable names in the game tomorrow. So that's going to be at 3 p.m. on my channel. Uh, the game is going to be recorded, so you guys can tune in then. And yeah, it's going to be really fun. But our first opponent of the day is going to be Ian with his own Tabu Lele and Metagross and Arcanine, but with Snorlax, Faramosa, and the Milotic. So I feel like this is a great lead just for Drifle and Tabu Lele, just because Drifle and being able to outspeed everything is great. You know, Shadow Ball hits Metagross and Tabu Lele for super effective. Can potentially knock out the Faramosa or Will O Wisp. It. Can also burn Snorlax. And I can set a Tailwind, so the combination of all that just seems too good to pass up on. I definitely want to go with those two. I'm thinking Marowak I probably don't really want to bring here, just because there isn't any Electric-type Pokemon. Um, so I think Garchomp and Kartana make the most sense by far. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I'm going to lock that in. As always, if you guys enjoyed Road Train, please share support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you, as always, for just watching my content whenever uh, I am able to post. I know it hasn't been as consistent re uh, more recently, and that's just, you know, I mentioned, like, the next couple of weeks are really busy because I'm finishing up my internship, and I obviously want to do a good job there. I'm uh, preparing for Worlds, which is in three, oh, just like uh, three to four weeks now. And obviously, I really want to have a good run at Worlds again. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for still just watching out content whenever I do produce it, and uh, hopefully, I can provide you guys with some more fun stuff. And let me know for Pokemon or strategies that you would like to see for the next team. We are going to see my Lodic and Metagross come out from my opponent as a lead. Okay, that's uh, definitely not the easiest lead to go up against. So it's like, I don't know, it could be worse, but it could be better as well. I guess the real question is, I feel like Top of the Leather should be faster, right, uh, than Metagross. Unless it's really, it's like a Scarf Metagross or something crazy like that. Because I'm not too worried about my Lodic, so you know what I really could do is just Shadow Ball it and Moonblast it. I think a double up will knock it out. But... Fast Metagross is something that I actually lost to US Internet. It's like, we're seeing some really cool combinations with Assault Vest Salamence and Weakness Policy Metagross. Um, but I feel like if there's anything that would be Scarfed on my opponent's side right now, it would be with the Milotic. But maybe Metagross is super fast or Scarfed. Maybe it protects here. Um, but Milotic shouldn't be able to do much to either of my Pokemon since Tabu Lele is especially defensive. Or more especially defensive than it is defensive. And Drift Bomb obviously has the Psychic Seed activated. So I'm just going to double up until the Metagross right now. I think there's low risk. Uh, I guess I could proc a weakness policy actually on the Metagross, but we don't see any switch outs. So I will be able to get that, and I do get the Moonblast off. I'm not sure if this knocks out. I want to say it does, even though Metagross resists. Nice. Perfect. So yeah, doubling up on the Metagross there. Get a clean knockout. Uh, I will take some life for Recoil, but so it shows my Lodic is not Scarfed. Uh, we do see an Ice Beam, so as long as there's no Freeze, I should be perfectly good, especially because Drifflin hangs on with over 50%. No Freeze either. Great. Yeah, so in that situation, I was like, considering, you know, the worst case scenario is Metagross is actually somehow super speedy, but the chances of that are unlikely, uh, especially because the team doesn't make much sense. Like, the reason why we saw Max Speed Metagross partnered up with Weakness Policy and uh, Bulldoze is because Salamence is still faster than that, and with uh, Bulldoze, you're able to control your opponent's terrain, or uh, like speed, and then Metagross actually outspeeds everything that's around top of Coco speed or lower, so pretty much everything in the metagame. But in that situation, like, there's little reason for my opponent to be running a max speed Metagross, uh, just because you probably want Adamant to hit as hard as possible, especially when you have the Tabu Lele by your side. So I know my Tabu Lele is faster. Um, I think this is still just a free opportunity, though, to just go for a Tailwind. And I'm probably going to... I'll just Moonblast into Tapu Lele here. I'm not as worried about my Lodic because I can Leaf Blade it, and... Uh, my opponent's not going to knock out either of my Pokemon unless he doubles up onto one of them, as we saw. Uh, my opponent's Tapu Lele does move first before mine, so I do confirm it's faster. It's going to target mine now with a Moonblast. 
not gonna be able to get the knockout and also reveals the life orb on his Tapu Lele. So that's fine. Uh, you know, his Tapu Lele should be able to eat up my Moonblast in return as well. Uh, actually, no, I get a crit. I mean, if the Tapu Lele was like max speed, maybe the crit didn't matter, but I mean, Tapu Lele's special defense that is decent. Uh, my Lodic just goes for another Ice Beam, so. Yeah, I'm gonna target down my Lele, that's more than okay. Like, I was thinking of protecting there, but I was like, I'm fine because either having Drift Blum or. Um, first of all, who do I want to bring in here? I will bring in Cortana, yeah. Yeah, so what I was thinking was, I'm fine losing either Drift Blum or Tapu Lele because I still get my Tailwind up guaranteed as well. Uh, so it is Arcanine as my opponent's last one. Yep, that makes sense. So, obviously, Arcanine, you know, a little bit tricky to deal with, but I don't think it should be too bad. Um, yeah, a Shadow Ball and a Leaf Blade should knock out the Milotic. Milotic probably protects here, but I still have multiple turns of Psychic Terrain. So I'm fine if it does protect, because I can just double up into the slot again next turn. And once my Lodic go da goes down, Garchomp just wins. But Arcanine actually protects. That's even better. Um, let's see if my Lodic protects. That doesn't. That's really weird. Okay. <laughs> I'll definitely take that. Uh, Leaf Blade doesn't knock out here, though. That might be a Salt Vest, my Lodic, given that damage output. That would explain a lot. Uh, looks like I crit there. Yeah. So, unfortunate for my opponent, but I'm pretty sure that is a Salt Vest, my Lodic. So I don't think like either of the crits I got in this game really mattered. Um, but obviously it made things a little bit easier for me. But, uh, yep, yeah, now just Shadow Ball and I guess I'll Sacred Sword. I mean, okay, like, even if my Lodic doesn't get crit there, at most it gets an Ice Beam off, either against Driftlum or Cortana. But because I know it's a Salt Vest, I can just Leaf Blade again next turn. So, like, that second crit definitely didn't matter. The first one, like, maybe, uh, against the Tapu Lele, but it would have been so low anyway, even if I didn't knock it out. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that Milotic was a Salt Vested base, given that it didn't protect. Uh, like, that would only make sense. So, gonna double up an Arcanine, proc its Barry, uh, and it's probably just gonna Flare Blitz, yep. But, I knew that, I mean, once the Milotic went down, I knew the game's over, because I've got Garchomp with Tech Rage in the back. So, proc gets down Drifloom, yep, that's fine. It's gonna take Recoil from the Flare Blitz as well. I guess the tricky thing is if, um, okay, let's say I didn't crit the Tapu Lele Moonblast. Yeah, then I'd still be fine, right? Because I have Tailwind up, and I get the free switch in into my Kartana. So then I just Shadow Ball the Arcanine slot and Leaf Blade the Milotic slot, which can't protect. And I guess you might switch Milotic out into Arcanine, but I think because, I'm like I mentioned, I'm pretty sure it's AV Milotic, my opponent didn't really have an out because you can't really stall out my Tailwind in time. So I'll just Tech Rage Sacred Sword here, and that should be game. But yeah, uh, I mean, this one was really one off the fact that my I had the speed advantage right from the start. Um... And, you know, my team is designed to, if you get Tailwind up and you're going against teams that aren't that bulky, you can really just sweep through uh, utilizing the turns of Tailwind because Garchomp, Kurtan, and Tapu Lele are just all really good offensive threats. So, Tech Rage here, kind of overkill on the Arcanine, that would knock out even through. But, I mean, there's no reason not to, it covers a protect option, right? Like, uh, once again, once Garchomp was against Arcanine, like, the game was over. But, good game to my opponent there. I think, um... Turn one, I definitely got fortunate because I it was kind of risky, I guess, doubling up into the Metagross. But like I said, the worst my Lodic does is go for an Ice Beam and, or a Scald, and it's not doing any damage to Tapu Lele at all. And Drift Plum, like it's a three KO either way. So if Metagross protects, yeah, sure, that's fine. The next turn I can just do the exact same attack with Shadow Ball Moonblast, and uh, nothing on the backside of my opponent's team could really take that. Other than maybe Arcanine, but like it wouldn't proc the berry and then another Shadow Ball. It might actually be in another Shadow Ball. Um, in KO range of another Shadow Ball. So, yeah, that's why I felt like I was relatively safe. But of course, uh, you know, the, like at max speed Metagross, or just like super speedy Metagross is something that does exist now. So you have to be a little bit more cognizant and aware of that. But we're going to go up against a Japanese opponent for our second game of the day using a team of Arcanine, Salamence, Tapu Koko, Celesteela, Gastrodon, and the Alolan Persian. Super intriguing team. Uh, I really like the team, first of all. That's really cool. So, Salamence is actually a pretty major issue for this team after I got rid of my Metagross, which I'd probably consider bringing here if I had it. Um, that is slightly scary. Hmm. This one's really tricky. Because Lele is phenomenal, but it has to watch out for a bunch of things. Like, I kind of want to bring Marowak, but I'm hoping I can... Uh, scare the top of Coco enough away from team preview. So I think I still want to lead just Drift Lele. I kind of need Kartana for the Gastrodon and potentially Salamence as well. I kind of want Garchomp here because of Tech Rage against three of or four of the six Pokemon, and I can Swords Dance and Fire Fang the Celesteela. 
So, I'll lock in. This one's gonna be tricky. I think, if anything, I might end up regretting not bringing Marowak, because you could absolutely make a case for it, but I think one of the downsides of using Top Lele Drifblum is, you know, it's difficult. Like, when you want to bring Drifblum, you pretty much always have to bring Top Lele, so you're, like, committing two slots already onto the team, and then, so you can only pick two of your four. I, I mean, that sounds kind of straightforward, but you're kind of limited in your options and leads. But it is a really good lead, that's why I like it a lot. So, Lele Drifblum against Celesteela in Persian. Okay, I'm okay with this. I mean, probably we'll see a parting shot into Tapu Lele. Uh, maybe a foul play. I mean, I can just will us the Gar or Celesteela, though. That's like what I really want to go for. And switch out into Garchomp. Or maybe I can just protect. I can Tailwind protect. Actually, that seems better. Why don't I just do that? Because then I threaten with Moonblast and Willows the next turn. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, Tailwind Protect it is. Um, Salicilla might heavy slam Drifblum, though. I guess the downside is I could get doubled up into Drifblum, and that would be bad. Then I get a free switch into Garchomp, at least. Uh, but le conserving Lele is going to be important, because like my Garchomp doesn't touch Salamence, which is a concern. Uh, oh my gosh. He is he actually doubling up into Drifblum? What a call. Or she, excuse me. Oh! Wow. That was really cool. Uh, I definitely was not anticipating that, and that's really bad. Hmm. Wow, that was such a good turn by my opponent. Well played. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So, I mean, Celesteela is still not that much of an issue, per se. I don't think Heavy Slam knocks Lele out anyway, so I think I will just Shadow Ball here. Can anything take a Moonblast? No, because the Cell. I, I guess the Arcanine could, but then it'd be in Psychic Care range. I'll just Shadow Ball Moonblast this turn. Uh, yeah, like my opponent perfectly read me that first turn. And I I thought it'd be relatively okay, but sub Seal isn't something I've seen in a while. So Persian just stays in. I'm okay with that. Knocking out Persian is nice because it is one of the bigger issues to my Garchomp. Uh, and I do get rid of the sub, which is still nice. So I wasn't sure if Shadow Ball could knock out the sub. So if this isn't Sash Persian, I should just knock out, uh, knock it out with Moonblast. Yes, nice. Uh, a lot of Persians, like, you'll go max speed and then max HP, like the one Marcus Thatcher had. And we will just see a Heavy Slam. Does it target Lele or Drifblum, though? That's the question. Does target down Lele. Wow, it actually got the knockout. I didn't think it would be able to get that. I guess I had, I, I always underestimate Celesteela's strength because I normally go for the burn onto it. Um, special defense boost, okay. So, if we see sub, I, I'm wondering, like, maybe it doesn't have Flamethrower then. But now this is bad because I lost my best answer against, um against Salamence. So my opponent kind of pinned me. I could have switched the Garchomp out, I suppose. And Salamence does come in. Yeah, that's really bad. Uh, I really thought I could survive the Heavy Sand with just a little bit of HP, but I guess I'm not used to that count since I normally go for the burn onto the Celesteelas. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna Shadow Ball Salamence here then, and I think I have to switch right back out to get rid of that Intimidate. If I want any chance of winning, like, because I've got the Focus Sash on Garchomp, or sorry, on Kartana, uh, Shadow Ball might just put it in Smart Strike KO range, and then Garchomp will win against the Celesteela. But, my opponent outplayed me the first two turns, and, like, I fell behind because of that. So, no Protect on either, which is nice, at least. Um, get a Spadef drop, but I'm probably gonna lose. Oh, Z-move. That's the Dragon Z-move. Interesting. Okay, so I'm glad I switched out there, I guess. Um... So now my question is, is there a flamethrower? And also, like, this is probably special uh, Devastating Drake, which is also pretty scary. Because that's still going to bring me down to my Sash, probably, on Kartana. Yep. Goes into Tana, brings me down to my Sash. What does Celesteela do? What does it do? Yeah, Heavy Slam into... Drifblum. Okay. So it's at plus two special defense now, but, like, I'm not as concerned about that. Uh, but now the issue is it could easily just protect and target down my Kartana. Or you could just switch out Salamence. Like, I'd probably lose this, to be honest. Uh, because I didn't conserve... Like, I didn't use Tailwind Wand. Like, that first turn, basically, was just so good on my opponent's end, and I, uh... I haven't seen sub on Celesteel for so long, I didn't even consider that as an option. But that was really nicely done. And sub actually makes it just, like, so much more difficult. Um... Hmm. So, what do you do if you're my opponent right now? Is, is there anything you'd wor be worried about? Because I could, 
I think Salamence might protect or switch out here. I would probably switch out if I'm my opponent. So I think I need to make some big plays here. I'm going to go for a Swords Dance. And just detect. Uh, I would probably... Oh no, Salamence didn't even switch out. <laughs> okay, I probably lose here then, unless Salamence just stages and protects. Okay, it does protect at least, that's a start. Um, hopefully Salasila targets down my Cortana, because I do get a free Swords Dance off now at least, but obviously Tech Rage and Earthquake is absolutely useless right now. We do just see a Heavy Slam. Oh, I targeted on Garchomp, nice read again. Sheesh. That looks like a pretty attack intensive... Okay, but maybe now Fire Fang and Smart Strike can actually knock out. I don't know. It's especially defensive. I think I've got to go for it, honestly. Yeah, I'll just Fire Fang. And Smart Strike. Because if I don't knock out Salamence, I just... I, I think, like, Salamence might be able to even survive the Smart Strike. It probably does. But if somehow it could pick up a double... I think, like, I'm expecting right now both Salamence and Cell Seal to hang on from the Smart Strike and Fire Fang. Uh, Cell Seal just goes for a Protect, okay? Which makes sense. Uh, so first of all, I still need the Smart Strike to KO, otherwise I'm probably just eating up a Draco Meteor. Oh. That was close. Yeah. So I'm actually running Modest Drift, or sorry, Timid Drift from over Modest, and if I were running Modest, like, obviously I'd have the damage output there, but, uh, maybe I could have doubled up on Mence as well. Like, maybe I should have done that since Mence protected last turn. Because if my opponent's last Pokemon were... I I, pro I should have actually, yeah, definitely doubled up on Mence. Although, I don't know, my opponent easily could have switched Mence out as well. Uh, like, if the last one was Gastrodon or Arcanine, I'd actually win. If it's Coco, I'd lose. Um, but I guess I won't be able to find out now. Yeah, I mean, this game, I think, was closer than it looked. I mean, if Salamence goes down there, I think I'm actually in a really solid position to win the game. Unless my opponent's last one is Coco. So, I guess I should have been doubling up on Mens regardless, but obviously the downside on doubling up on Mens is my opponent might not expect Fire Fang, um, or thinks Salasila can survive, so maybe just get greedy and stay in an attack. So, uh, it's cool to see special Mens do well, though, because it is definitely something that was used maybe earlier on in the season, but hasn't seen as much usage, like, as later on. We've seen, I uh, now now we've seen, like, Nyx variants or Assault Vest variants, where you run, like, Draco Meteor, or Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, Bulldoze, Hydro Pump, etc., but I will play a third game just because I uh, haven't been able to get as many videos out recently. So just some more fun stuff for you guys. But yeah, really well played by my opponent there overall, honestly. And uh, like the sub just caught me off guard and the foul play target onto Drift Plum. Like I thought turn one I'd be able to get out relatively scotch free. But instead I ended up taking a ton of damage on a really important Pokemon in the matchup. And I was not able to get a burn on Drift Plum or on Celestia. And I shouldn't have assumed that my top of the could have hung on from a heavy slam. I'm not sure why I thought I did. Uh, but we're gonna find a Drift Lele mirror match for our third game today. Drift Lele, but with Garchomp, Arcanine, Celesteela, and Gigalith. Or Gigalith. Whew! That's a doozy. Hmm. I still want to go with Drift Plum, Tapu Lele. I wonder if my opponent's gonna go like Drift Plum and something like, I don't know, Gigalith? And Gigalith's really interesting on that call. My Garchomp's really good. I don't know, I think it's still worth just going Drift on Lele here. Um, just because Lele is a huge offensive asset against my opponent's entire team. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, I mean, Arcanine's not that great, neither is Marowak. Just because of the threat of the Gigalith. So, the thing against Gigalith, Gigalith's pretty good, but I have Garchomp and Cartana, so I'm not sure if he'll make an appearance. Um, my Garchomp's really solid. The only downside in this match is, like... My Tabu Lele and my Garchomp are both pretty slow, um, so that could cause some issues, but we'll see. So, it's going to be Drift Lele. Alright, so we'll get to see which abilities and seeds activate first. Um, I'm hoping my Drift Plum's faster, that would be nice, because then I'd be able to Shadow Ball. So, uh, my Lele is probably slower, yeah, uh, just because I have like no speed investment, so I'm pretty much always going to be slower unless they're quiet. Uh, but my seed does activate first, which is good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's see. So, the safest play is to Tailwind and Protect, but my Drifloom can easily get doubled up into. Mm. Uh, I don't know how fast my opponent's Lele is, because I could, I could Shadow Ball Drifloom. 
No, but if Drifloon Tail wins, then it would outspeed me next turn. I feel like I get doubled up into here. Maybe I just want to trade then? Hmm, this one's tricky. Uh, I guess I'll Tailwind. And Psychic. Yeah, actually, yeah, because then I get a free switch into Cartana, so... I mean, I feel like Tailwinding's still the safer play, just because I'm faster, so might as well. Okay, yeah, we just trade Tailwind. So that's fine, because I have a faster Drift one, so this works out more in my favor, I would say. And uh, we just see a Moonblast. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's perfectly fine, actually. Uh, no special attack drop, looks like. Nice. Okay, great. So, yeah, like, having a faster Drift Limb is, like, a absolutely a big deal here. Because now I can just Shadow Ball that Drift Limb slot safely. Unless we somehow speed tie, but I did change my spread, so I'd be surprised if that were the case. Um, I, I'm thinking of conserving Tapu Lele, but the thing is, Garchomp and Kartana seem too important to give up. Yeah. So, I'll just let my opponent knock my Tapu Lele out, and then it'll take two procs of Life Orb damage from this turn and last turn. And Shadow Balling my opponent's Drift Limb seems relatively safe. It actually switches out, but that's fine. I get a free Shadow Ball against the Salasteela, and then I can burn that slot next turn. Uh, and now, you know, they're not exerting will o pressure or anything like that. So, nice switch by my opponent to conserve the Drift Limb, but I'm not sure, like, conserving Drift Limb is actually that great. But we actually see the Psychic going to Drift Limb. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I was not expecting that. Maybe expecting my top of Lele to switch, but I actually end up getting a free attack off with Lele, which is not what I anticipated, but I'll definitely take that. Uh, it doesn't get the knockout on Lele, but I get a special attack drop, which is nice. And now Lele will faint from uh, another attack. I think I'll probably want to burn the Cell Stealer here. Yes. I definitely want to Will O Wisp it. Hmm. This turn is tricky. Or maybe I can just Shadow Ball top of Lele. Uh, but Burning Celesteela would be nice. I think if you're here, you probably... Heavy Slam? A Garchomp Kartana are great to have in the back, but I'd like to get a Sword Stance off, of his, off if possible. I think I will will o -Wisp Celesteela here. And... Am I willing to lose both my Pokemon this turn? I think so. A will has been Psychic that slot. That might seem weird, but... Nice, okay, Lele protects, perfect. Yeah, so that was kind of the read I was going for. Uh, hopefully I don't miss. Nice. But I figured even if I lost both my Pokemon, like I have Garchomp and Kartana, and my Garchomp has Sword Stance to specifically deal with Celesteel as well. Um, so this ends up being a pretty good turn regardless. Yeah, that Life Orb Psychic, actually, another one should knock out Celesteel, and I hang out with just a bit of HP, as we do just see a Heavy Slam. Although, we Celesteel could have get a special defense drop. Uh, increase here. Oh, <laughs> Drifloom actually hangs on. I wasn't expecting it to hang on there, um, but just because of how much damage Celesteel was doing the last game, but now I can just easily Shadow Ball Tapu Lele and Psychic the Celesteela, and I can get another Tailwind up, which is why having the faster Drifloom was just such a big deal. And uh, yeah, I guess in this episode we saw both the upside and downside, because like the downside was that I'm slower, uh, or sorry, I don't do as much damage, so like that second game, uh, I missed out on the knockout just by that little of a margin. Uh, Celesteel going for the Protector and switching out to Drifloom just to sack it, I think that makes a lot of sense. That might also indicate to me that Celesteel has the Pinch Berry, uh, because it is in range, I think, now, maybe, where a Burn Turn will activate the Berry. It didn't have Leftover, so that would make the most sense to me. But I'm not too worried about Celesteel when I have Sword Stance Garchomp. Like, I ran Sword Stance Fire Fang just because I expected Celesteel to be popular when I originally brought that Garchomp. Uh, first, the Anaheim Regionals. So yeah, we do see the Pinch Berry. The Ayapa Berry. Um, but I'm okay with that, just because, you know, you're losing some HP every turn. I've got a Sash, Kartana, and a Garchomp in the back, and I can still easily just Tailwind t uh, this turn. So, yeah, things are looking really solid. And once again, it's because I had a faster Drift Bloom, but um, that, that was, that's the main reason. But my opponent also, like, gave me a couple turns where, you know, double Lele protected, and it didn't knock out my Lele, so I was getting free damage off again. So here, I definitely will just Tailwind. And... I'll protect. Yes. So the idea behind Tailwinding and Protecting here is just to guarantee I outspeed with Garchomp, because I don't know how fast the Tapu Lele on my opponent's side is. Tapu Lele, should it try to go for a knockout, will faint if it targets down Drift Bloom. If it targets my own Lele, that's fine. I get my Tailwind up, I get Garchomp in for free, that's a free Sword Stance when I can target down the Tapu Lele slot. And, I, I mean, you guys have seen this team a fair amount since I used it at Oregon Regionals, but a lot about the team is just setting up Garchomp and sweeping from there. So... 
Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm in a pretty commanding position now. It's not over 100%, and not knowing my opponent's last one also is not great. It's actually Garchomp, which is perfect for me, yeah. Huh, uh, maybe trying to bait out an attack, but I, I know there's no reason to play risky right now. Might as well just go for the plays that I am making. Seeing guard jump is good too, I mean like no intimidate pressure, we do see a heavy slam, just correctly target down the drift womp, so nice play by my opponent, but you know, I'm actually not too phased by that because now I get a free switch and into guard chomp. Uh, cell seal's beast boost, does give it a defense boost, okay, so it is defensive cell seal, which is interesting, as the weirdness disappears, yes. So I can bring in guard chomp, um, that is a nice switch by my opponent, so there's actually like... I don't know, I uh, I could easily just Fire Fang and Moonblast Cell Steal, right? But like if Garchomp Tectonic Rages, I'd actually lose. So I think I'm going to still go for the safest play. Ooh, although maybe that's actually not the best because this is a defensively oriented Cell Steal. Um, I still got Sash Tana though, and I have Sacred Sword. Yeah, I think I'm just going to Swords Dance and Moonblast here. And the reason why I'm not too worried is because I do have Focus Ash. And yeah, Garchomp doesn't protect, nice. Unless that's like, jolly max speed Scarf. Okay, no. <laughs> Assault Vest could cause some issues as well, actually. Okay. Yeah, so I like, uh, I actually get a crit there, so maybe it was AV. I don't know, I feel like the Garchomp does have the Z move, but there was a Gigalith on the team, and Gigalith normally has Z moves. But a Heavy Slam plus a Earthquake wouldn't have knocked me out. Uh, a Dragon Claw would have though, so if that was actually Assault Vested, I didn't even consider that, but maybe I should have. That could have been really scary, wow. Um, so maybe that crit did actually bail me out, like I thought I was in a position where I had the game completely won. Because uh, if it is actually, you know, somehow Assault Vest Garchomp, but that's not like the craziest thing, I mean that actually did win the US International Championships. Then a Dragon Claw, actually since my opponent Leech Seeded, yeah, I would have been fine anyway. Um, yeah. Because Moonblast, like, I think what my opponent was hoping for is for me to double up into Celesteela and for me to get careless, but I know the only way I lose this game is if I do exactly that, so no reason to get careless. Like, I need to assess, I need to give Garchomp the respect that it deserves, because if I just double up into Celesteela trying to get really fancy and I do get the knockout, Garchomp could just Tectonic Rage me, and I'd faint from the Life Orb Recoil, and then I'd actually just lose the game because Cartana can't solo everything. So, there was a position where, okay, if Garchomp protects, then I get a free Sword Dance off here, and I can Fire Fang the Celesteela potentially to just knock it out. Now I'm in a position where I can actually just... I'm going to Tectonic Rage the top of Lele because I want to knock out through Protect and I'll just Sacred Sword. I know Celesteela is ticking on a timer, it can't Leech see my Cartana and I can Fire Fang. Um, and Sacred Sword goes through the defense boost anyway. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, no reason not to Tectonic Rage. Like, I guess I could have Fire Fang, Sacred S or Smart Strike the uh, top of Lele. Um, that might have just been a better play, I guess. But... I could have missed, whereas at least this turn, I don't. I know I'm guaranteed to hit both of my attacks. Um, and, like, I'm not too worried about a burn solo seal. Like, getting the burn off was really nice. So I will knock out the top of Lele. And there shouldn't be much more my opponent can really do. Probably go for... Yeah, there's a the flamethrower. I guess my opponent gets a burn? I don't know. Like, I still have SD Chomp, and sure, it's a defensive solo seal, but I'm still sitting at plus one, and the solo seal is burn. And uh, no burn. Yeah, so that's definitely game. Uh, definitely a pretty intense one though. He, like it, sh it was honestly my opponent gave a really good fight given the circumstances. Like having a fast drift bloom just was so helpful for me, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean Salcilla probably protects here, but a fire fang and a secret sword most definitely will knock out anyway. Uh, so no reason to get fancy and go for another sword stance here with Garchomp. Like you definitely protect with Salcilla, but just kind of drawing out the game a little bit longer. Um, I'm fairly sure Sacred Sword plus Fire Fang should knock out. Like. Just because I am at plus two and Celestial is only at plus one. Like the fact it wasn't able to get um, another defense boost from the Tapu Lele was a big deal. But yes, just kind of playing things out now. And uh, we should be good. Like that, again, that's like Celestial was why I ran Fire Fang. It's obviously great against Cartana as well, but like it made it so that I had many win conditions against Celestial outside of just Arcanine. Back when I was running the Oregon team. Of course, I have Marowak on the team now, but still, I don't bring that too often. So, just gonna go for Fire Fang Sacred Sword again. Like, uh, my opponent actually goes for a double. Yeah, doesn't get it. I respect the double there. I like it. It's like, you know, you're probably getting knocked out anyway, so might as well try to go for a double. And if you get that or a miss, then maybe you're still in it. I don't know. I think, like, Garchomp just ends up winning anyway, but mm, I don't know. Leech Seed was ticking off, like, slowly but surely. 
But we do end up winning uh, this last game, so we do go two and one. Uh, that second game still like just I mean really well played by my all my opponents. Uh, I think like my opponent here had it really tough and had to make some really risky uh, plays to try to get back into. It. I really respect the plays that he made. Uh, the second one just like really really like sub style skill and just foul play. Uh, nothing like too crazy, but just making some really good reads. In the first game, I kind of had control off for the first turn, which obviously was pretty good for me. So yeah, it's gonna be it for this episode. Three games for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a like if you did. Go give me any recommendations for Pokemon or strategies that you'd like to see because I'm trying to get this new team done by the weekend so then you guys can see a new team all of next week and so on. And thank you guys for watching. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys next time. Go also check out the MBL battle against Team Dream Ball. That will go up on my channel 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. All right, peace.